Good morning. It's Leanne Peters here. I'm from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. And I'm here to share some cards. We're looking at the 1st and the 2nd of October today, which is exciting. We're starting a new month. And uh, it's the 10th month, of course. I say, of course, because I wrote my newsletter this morning and I wrote the 8th month because I just, uh, the October, I just, my brain keeps thinking it's the 8th month until I actually come, you know, come to out of my little fairy land <laughs> and think properly. But I just, yeah, it's just interesting that they call the 10th month October, so... Anyway, it is the 10th month, I remind myself, and I'm here to pull some cards for Tuesday and Wednesday. I trust this video finds you well, and while you're coming on over, hopefully you're getting a live notification, um, I want to send out a extra special welcome to my Temple of Balance patrons for October. My Pillar of Light members... And all of those of you who support my work through my website, thank you so much for your support. I'm coming to you live now from Tasmania, Australia, where it is Tuesday the 1st of October. And the time is 8.38, <laughs> speaking of 8, 8.88. Michelle, good morning, and Cindy's here, welcome. So, if you're new to watching, what I'm going to be doing is using my oracle cards that I illustrated and created. And I have two decks combined here. We have Animal Kingdom Oracle Cards and the Speed of Light Oracle Cards. So these have been made the same size, so they fit together and make a really luscious 110 card deck. So I'll be using this deck to find the best cards that the majority of us need for Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not pulling cards for individuals. This is general guidance for everyone, so I trust that you've been let here for a reason, and I trust that something shared supports you. I encourage you to take on board what does feel right and what does fit into your life easily, what does resonate and feel personal to you. Take those things on board and let the rest go, and let's allow ourselves to be surprised and see what happens. Jala's here. Welcome. Jala just picked up the phone and there you are. That's very cool. And Pearl. Welcome to you, Pearl. And welcome everybody. Okay, let's get straight into it. We'll dive in to the 1st of October. So I'm looking for the best card that the majority of us need for Tuesday, the 1st of October, 2024. And that best card is... It's this. It's an Animal Kingdom Oracle card. And it is the Sea Eagle. Again, the Sea Eagle came up in the last video I did. It's card 29. In fact, it came up for the 29th, didn't it? So it came up for two days ago. So this energy is strong still at the moment. And the key word for the Sea Eagle is reconnection. So remember, if you watched the last video that I was talking about plugging in and I was talking about noticing what we feel disconnected from because that can sometimes be a good way in to, towards reconnection is to see what or who we're disconnected from. Sometimes it's hard to reconnect to something that we're not clear is actually disconnected. So I like to sort of think about, I look at my relationship with myself so where do I feel disconnected from me? Where do I feel disconnected in relationships? So this is relationships across the board from my closest to my more distant ones. So the closest ones are going to be ones that I that have more weight for me in my life. They're my most important relationships. And then the further away they go, they become kind of less important in some ways in regards to my uh, priority of uh, tending to those relationships. So I want to assess and make sure that I'm not feeling disconnected in my relationships, especially in my closest, most important ones. And I also look at where I'm feeling disconnected in my life. So the things that I'm doing or the, the things that I'm making, the projects that I've got going on, the work that I'm doing, the things, uh, my schedule as well, looking at how I spend my time. 
So where am I feeling disconnected is what I'd be looking at because when I'm clear about what I'm disconnected from, then I have a, I feel like a clearer uh, objective or a clearer intention, a clearer understanding of how or what I need to do or that I at least need to reconnect. How I do that is something to be determined. So if, it, for example, it's a relationship disconnection, I might need to reach back out to a person. I might need to reconcile. I might need to, we might need to mend some bridges or build some bridges um, or whatever it might be. So whatever the action that's required for the reconnection can be determined more clearly once we know what the problem is. So what's the disconnection? What can we do to help reconnect? I also think about my disconnection from spirit. So my disconnection from my spirituality because our spiritual connections, especially related to our crown chakra, is uh, very much aligned with our spirituality. So I also, when I'm looking at where I need to reconnect or where I'm feeling disconnected, I want to also look at or reflect upon my spirituality. How am I nurturing that? How am I tending to my spiritual needs and my spiritual interests? Have I been so busy with other things that I'm feeling disconnected on a spiritual level? If so, what can I do to reconnect on those spiritual levels? So feeling reconnected or feeling connected spiritually can have a really great ripple effect down through the levels and out into our life, so down through um, through to our body and out into our life. So reconnection is still strong at this time. It's strong at the moment. So what do we need to reconnect to? Where are we feeling disconnected? How or how, where do we need to plug back in? There is a strength too in this card, like I talked a bit about the other day, um, about reconnecting with our strength. Reconnecting with our power in a healthy way, of course. We don't want to be dominating and controlling and manipulative in that sort of uh, sense of power. We want to establish our true power that is empowering. Empowering means that we, when we're standing in our power, we also naturally maybe, or the, the inclination of that empowerment is to also lift others up as well, which is what I really try and do in the work that I do. I want to try and stand in my power and hopefully encourage you to stand in your power too. I don't want you to give me your power. I don't want your power. I want to help you access your power and use that to lift you up. So that's more of an empowerment. So where do you need to reconnect to your strengths, your power perhaps, your empowerment? Where are you feeling weak in your life? Where are you feeling small? Where are you feeling powerless? And what can you do to counteract that, to plug back in or reconnect back to that power that you have, that you are? So that's the sea eagle. Also flying high, lifting our perspective, our perception of things. Look from a higher, uh, bigger picture perspective, from a bird's eye view, if you like can sometimes give us more of the bigger picture of what's playing out in our life. So if things seem small and we're very close to the problems in our life, it can be hard to see a solution. So we may find it helpful to imagine lifting up, maybe like an eagle flying above, and look at the situation from some other angles. It may help us slip out of the, the intensity of being really close to the problem and see things more broadly. There might be something to offer us in, in a shift of perspective. So that's for Tuesday, the 1st of October. Now I'm looking for the best card for Wednesday, the 2nd of October. And that best card for the majority of us for Wednesday, the 2nd, is this. It's another animal kingdom. And it's the Tiger Shark card 20. And it says, open your heart. So there's a strength in this card, but there's also a vulnerability. And in fact, there is, when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, there is a strength in that. It might not feel very strengthening when we're feeling vulnerable. 
but there is a strength in allowing ourselves to be vulnerable when we feel it. So there is a sensitivity in this card, the shark's revealing its most sensitive, vulnerable side, its underbelly. So it's revealing its sensitive side, it's revealing its heart. And we might find that some of us are in a space feeling that as well. Maybe some of us have our, the body down and we're on patrol, maybe we're on guard, maybe we're feeling a bit paranoid and we're a bit sort of shark-like, a bit fierce at the moment. Is that working for us? There is a time and a place perhaps for it, but maybe it's a bit too harsh. Maybe our, our skin's a little too thick at this time. Maybe we're a little too insensitive, for example, and that's up to us to determine. So if we are feeling a bit that way, then it might be helpful, especially on, on Wednesday, for us to tap into our heart, to tap into our sensitivity and to see what's, what's happening in there. Are we being insensitive or on guard because we're trying to overly protect ourselves or overly protect others? Are we trying to overly defend or justify our actions and we're hiding that, that sort of tough exterior behind a mushy interior? Our mushy interior may be calling for some attention. If we don't give it attention, it's just going to get louder and louder and louder. And then the pressure builds. It's like a bottling up of emotion or a bottling up of energy. So if we don't tap into it and connect with it, even if it's privately and personally, which is how, well, it's how I like to do mine. I don't tend to, you know, um, be overly sensitive all the time. I want to connect in with that. That's a sacred place for me. And I personally connect there. This is a personal place for me. So if I feel like I'm being on guard or I'm being insensitive to perhaps other people's situations that are occurring around me, and I'm noticing a bit of an insensitivity in me for some reason, I might be on guard for some reason, then I want to, if I'm noticing that, I want to look at it. And I want to look at it privately. This is a private thing for me to explore. So how do I do that? I might ask myself some questions. I might try and crack into the shell that I might have been putting up without realising it to protect myself. Um, I might want to, in fact, I often journal write or I get out my healing energy cards for some clarity. I might talk to my husband about it if I am in that sort of space. I might meditate or step out into nature. But I really want to sort of contemplate and reflect internally and see what's going on for me. So where are you feeling sensitive? Is this balanced or is it out of balance for you at the moment? And if it is, what can you do to get to know that side of yourself through your open heart so that you can keep moving forward? There's a strong instinctual card with the energy with this card too. So we may feel um, or we may want to remind ourselves to trust our instincts, to trust our intuition as we guide our way forward as we move forward so there is a flow there is an emotional sort of sense too with this particular card so that's for Wednesday so I guess just reflecting on that the sea eagle we could look at more from a mental level and the tiger shark we could look at more from an emotional level if that's something that interests you. But there are our cards for the next couple of days. I am going to pull a theme card in just a moment. But before I do, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Please show us some love. Please comment. Please share if you're inspired to. And if you'd prefer to connect more privately, you can always send us a message through our website. You know, the good old-fashioned email. <laughs> um, so if you'd like to do that you're very welcome uh, if you'd like to learn more about my cards we've only seen the Animal Kingdom Oracle cards so far today which is not that usual lately usually it's the other deck but if you'd like to learn more about these cards and start working with them yourselves you can learn more about them on my website they're not in shops I've self-published and self-distribute these cards so you'll only find them on my website 
please go to templeofbalance.com.au. And if you'd like to learn more about Temple of Balance or the work I do here, if you would like to support my work so that I can keep doing videos like this, then please visit my website and see if there's anything that speaks to you. We are turning 20 in February, so I do have a few Tasmanian events coming up in February. So if that's something that might interest you, please have a look and uh, have a look under the event tab on my website. So I'm now looking for the best card for the theme. The theme card will help bring these days together and help us see the bigger picture for the 1st and the 2nd of October. So, the best theme card for the majority of us for the 1st and the 2nd of October 2024 is this. It's another Animal Kingdom. We're really shifting things, aren't we? Because it was just speed of light for so long. <gasps> and we've got a dragon. So there are five dragons in the Animal Kingdom Oracle. And we have one of them. It's the Air Dragon, card 27. And the air dragon says, your mind is powerful. So there is a strong mental energy present for Tuesday and Wednesday. And we can use the power of our mind, our willpower, our determination, our ability to focus, our ability to find a solution, our ability to see things through. We can use the power of our mind to help push us through. And what I'm seeing is like us being in rock like in a cave perhaps somewhere and using our mind and it feels like it comes from the third eye but using our mind to sort of tunnel our way out so if you find that you're dealing with something difficult at the moment if you're feeling trapped or stuck or uncertain about what to do or how to proceed there is a feeling that we can use the power of our mind to tunnel to create a tunnel like a drill a tunnel out carve out a tunnel here from the rock and get out of the predicament that we that we might find ourselves in. So um, what is this saying? It may be looking at the situation if we are in a predicament and we don't know what to do and we are feeling trapped. What uh, we might be looking at a solution. How can we find a way to uh, how can we consider options? How can we find a new perspective? How can we do like the sea eagle and, and rise up above the problem and look at it from other perspectives and other viewpoints? How can we reconnect to our strengths, reconnect to a solution, reconnect in areas of our life where we feel disconnected? Because when we feel disconnected, we tend to feel alone. We tend to separate ourselves, uh, even if it's not across our whole life, but we can separate ourselves from whatever we're feeling disconnected from so we tend to then retreat and pull in so to notice where we're disconnected may also give us some uh what would you say like a strength or a, a clarity that will help us give something to to grip onto to get out of this predicament that we're in and you know because it's saying because i'm seeing here that our mind will help us sort of tunnel our way out it means that we might have to find something to focus on some sort of hope um, if we're focusing on the separation or focusing on the disconnection or focusing on the predicament and we're feeling trapped and stuck and there's no way out then we're not going to be able to tunnel our way out it's not going to magically happen so it's almost like we need to give our mind something to grip onto some type of hope some solution some breakthrough that we could potentially move to and then work with our, the power of our mind to get ourselves out of this particular situation. So what might it be? It could be hope, it could be support, it could be a shift in attitude, it could be a renewed connection with our strengths uh, and our ability to free ourselves, our ability to move forward, our ability to find a solution. Um, it could also be connected with the energy of the shark, the tiger shark that came up for Tuesday and dropping our hard persona, dropping our insensitivity, dropping our um, the distance that we're creating, the barrier that we're creating with ourselves and others and our life, dropping that, it sort of feels like a thick shark skin dropping that thick skin that we've been putting up and, and tapping into our heart and really finding what is it that we want 
and what is it that we feel is lacking or missing or, or out of balance or out of whack for us and how can we listen to our heart and listen to our sensitivity listen to our strong emotion that is trying to show us that something's not right and I do find our emotions tend to be really quite strong indicators that something's not quite right here. So by listening to that instead of avoiding it may also help give us the, the hope or the, the, what is it? It's like a, a gentle opening. It's like a, this might be okay. This might work out and just sort of softening our attitude because once we fix our mind on whatever it is to get out, then we can tunnel our way out. So our mind is powerful. Let's not underestimate the power of our mind. It can be our best friend and ally, or it can be our worst enemy. So is your mind your worst enemy? If so, kick it out of the driver's seat and bring your higher self, your higher mind into the driver's seat, the clarity, the focus, the strengths that you have in your mind. And get that in charge and that leading the way for you. If we let our more negative mind take over, then um, we feel hopeless and powerless and there's no way out because that's what that side of our mind wants us to believe. If that side of our mind, our lower mind, I call it, if that wants to keep itself alive, then it's going to help. It's going to continue to help, um, not help. It's going to continue to keep us small. And thinking small thoughts about ourselves and small thoughts about our life. It's going to keep us in fear to keep itself alive. So if your lower mind is in the driver's seat of your life and you're, being, you're about to drive off the edge of a cliff, then it may be time to get that lower mind out of the driver's seat and get your higher mind in. Um, your higher mind that can make decisions that is rational, it has common sense, it's able to focus, it's more empowering and it wants to see you succeed, it wants to see you um, in a balanced place in your life. So this is very powerful for our theme card, the Air Dragon. Let's see how we go. Have a great couple of days. I'll be back to share with you again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.